I'd like to uh, just uh, acknowledge that I am located in my home, which is on the unceded ancestral and traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Um, today, uh, we have a, a presentation that's a little bit different, as you will see, coming from uh, Peter Dodek. And I'll let Peter uh, introduce himself, and he's going to talk to us uh, on two topics, I believe. One, on a bike trip through uh, the southern part of Italy in Puglia. And the second, he's going to talk to us about Malta. So I'll hand it over to Peter. And uh, Peter, off you go. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks, everybody, for your uh, uh, patience with this a little different presentation. So. Um, in um, September of 2019, my wife and I did a trip um, in, to, to Puglia, which is the, the heel of Italy. And um, if, you can, if you can see my pointer, it's uh, this area here. Um, can everybody see the pointer? We can see the pointer. Okay. Yeah. And um, we did a bicycle trip here that was uh, arranged by a company called oops, Puglia Cycle Tours. And... Um, and then we flew uh, over to Malta, which is a tiny island over here, uh, just south of Sicily, uh, where we spent the last uh, about five days. So what I'd like to do is just show you our route here. Um, this is uh, the Puglia part. So we started in Bari, um, which is a port town. And um, actually, we took the train to Matera, which is in just in the next province called Basilicata. Now, this was uh, September 2019. And uh, there was something very, Matera is a very special town. Um, you'll see some photos of Matera, um, but it's a, it's a town that was used in a, in a recent movie. And does anybody know the name of the movie that it was uh, used in uh, re very recently? You will know right away if, you, if, you, if you've seen the movie, but maybe you didn't know the name of the town. Um, nobody jumping in, it was the latest James Bond movie and they were filming the movie while we were there. So it was quite exciting to be in this town with all these sets and, and props going on uh, related to this, uh, that, that James Bond movie. At the beginning, if you remember the movie, the beginning of the movie drives through a tunnel and then appears in this magical Italian town. That's the town of Matera. Anyway, from Matera, we started our bike trip. Oops, I don't know why it's doing that. Started our bike trip. And um, the, this was uh, bikes that were equipped with GPS. Uh, so they on, on the front of the panel bars, there was a little display that with a big arrow that said, go this way. So you didn't have to look for names of anything. Um, you just follow. You just made sure you were on the same street that the arrow was on. That the arrow was on. That's right. So um, and we our first stop, we went from uh, from Matera. We went through Albero Bello, which uh, is an interesting town because there's interesting buildings called Truly. And um, we stayed actually in Ostuni which is called the white town because a lot of the uh, architecture there is white. Um, from there, we went to Manduria, uh, which is uh, getting closer to the, uh, the Ionian Sea here on this side and stayed there. And then we went down to Gallipoli. This is not the same Gallipoli of World War I fame, different Gallipoli, um, but it's on the coast, a very pretty town. And uh, from there, we headed over to Lecce, which is a very much of a Baroque architecture town. And then from, um, uh, from Lecce, we went to Otranto, um, which is where we finished the bike part of the trip, and then took a bus up to Brindisi. And from Brindisi, we flew to Malta. Now you can see from the scale of this map, uh, that's what five kilometers looks like. Oops, uh, I don't know, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, um, the, island, the islands that compose Malta are uh, fairly small. And uh, the main town is the town of Valletta, which is a big uh, uh, port, particularly for uh, luxury uh, cruise boats. That wasn't us, but we did stay in Valletta. Now, I just wanted to just give you a little bit of the, of the history of these places uh, be before we uh, start the show. And that, I mean, Puglia, like, like uh, many parts of Italy, was, of course, occupied by the Romans and then the Byzantines and then the Normans and the French and the Spanish. Everybody was involved there. Um, and uh, even the French Revolution hit the south of Italy at the en end of the 1700s. Um, and um, the uh, kingdom down there at the, after Napoleon was defeated in 1816 became with part of the kingdom of the two Sicilies. 
And then in 1861, when Italy was uh, organized as a country, the Risorgimento, um, Puglia joined. Um, and uh, it's been a very poor part of Italy, um, particularly during the, the world wars, um, but um, it, uh, it is now getting, um, I guess, a little bit more of a rejuvenation, particularly through tourism and also through its agriculture. Uh, Malta has an interesting history because um, Malta, of course, was the, sort, the, the site of um, two sieges. And I point you to two books by um, Ernley Bradford, um, who wrote um, two books called The Siege of Malta. One was in 1565, which was with the Ottomans. And this was the battle um, that took place uh, actually right here on Valletta um, that uh, essentially uh, held back the Ottomans from the conquering Western Europe. Um, and uh, the second siege was in 1940 to 42, uh, when this was used as an important base by the, the British uh, to, uh, to um, uh, help defeat the Nazis. So these places have interesting historical significance. Now what I'd like to do is I'm just going to uh, switch um, what I'm doing here, stop share for a moment and um, get my other presentation up, which is, um, it'll be just a second here. And that's the screen I want to share. And this is Bari, and this is my wife. <laughs> so this presentation has music with it, as you can see. Is the music too loud? So this is Bari, and this is the old town of Bari. We arrived in the afternoon, and so we basically got there in the evening, and we had a couple of days uh, to just walk around the town. Uh, this was at a, at a, a market uh, in the town. Can everybody hear me and the music? Peter, you can hear me and the music. If you lower the volume of music a little bit, it might be better. Sorry, Paul, I just paused it. What did you say? Could you lower the volume of the music a bit? Then we can hear you better. Okay, I will lower the music volume. I think I can do it that way. Yes. And let's try this. <laughs> now, is that better? No. Let me try that. Is that better? That seems better, thank you. Okay, um, right, so we were just walking around the town we came across that wedding that was happening um this is inside uh, one of the old cathedrals there some interesting mosaic work and uh this is in the crypt uh, of that church and then we went on to um monopoly Monopoly is south of Bari. We took a train there and uh, walked around the town there. Um, uh, it's an interesting uh, port town. Another wedding. Excuse me, this is still Bari. I'm sorry, we're still in Bari, not, not Monopoly. Uh, Monopoly's coming up. And it had a, there was a, a pouring, a, a major rainstorm, but it only lasted for a short time, probably less than an hour, and then the sun came out thoroughly again. This is just taken from the hotel we stayed at in Bari. Uh, this is a wonderful restaurant called Adue Giacone, which has, was a wonderful seafood restaurant in Bari that we went to uh, at the recommendation of somebody in a store that we visited. This is just some of the some of the beautiful dishes that we had in this restaurant. Way too much food. <laughs> Interesting blend of Baroque and other architecture. Now this is Monopoly. This is a town that's about an hour train ride south of Bari, uh, mostly fishing. And again, we just walked around the old town. Uh, to explore. This was a day trip out of Bari.
having some del delicious baked good in Monopoly. Is the sound okay now? Very good, thank you. Okay. Only in Italy. <laughs> now this is, we then took the train up north between Monopoly and Bari, it's Polignano Amare. And this is a town that's famous for this particular beach, which is set in this um, in, in set area. This is the guy that wrote the song Volare, for those of you who remember that. And that beach is just around the corner of those rocks there. It's just in this little bay. Of course, you can't go to Italy without having some uh, good gelato. And I just took a few pictures of people and, uh, and still life around the town. So this is the coastline of Polignano Amare. This is Matera. So it's a town that's set, that's actually carved in limestone, set in a valley. Uh, and so there's buildings and caves in this town. That's a big loaf of bread that we saw in, in, the, in one of the piazzas there. Um, and um, it is, uh, so some of the houses are actually carved right into the, into the caves. And they actually look like caves the inside. But of course there are buildings built on top of them or as a facade to these caves. So if you just imagine that there's limestone caves behind all those buildings, that's what it looks like. Um, this is a painting by a, a guy that wrote a book called Christ Stopped at Eboli, which is a wonderful history of that area. And that's that uh, our, the author painted that painting. So those are those caves. Here's the James Bond car, by the way, coming down that fake tunnel, uh, which was just across from our hotel. And this is the town at night. It's quite magical. So it was very much a rural uh, town. Um, and in fact, because of the poor living conditions, people were moved out of these caves for a period of time until the, uh, the government um, restored them into uh, livable dwellings. And now it's quite the tourist area. So that's what it looks like without buildings on it, but that's the kind of landscape around there. So there's a, there's, this is, they've recreated one of these dwellings inside the cave. That's what it looks like in there. And I think this was an old church. Again, more of the valley. This is just a panel shot that I took of the whole town from one of the uh, piazzas. We walked by a building and there were six, uh, six Aston Martins uh, that were used in the filming of the, of the James Bond movie. And everywhere we went, we had a delicious Italian breakfast. So here's the day one of uh, starting on these bikes. My wife had an e-bike, I had a regular bike. And uh, uh, here we happened to come across some grapes. And I guess if they're on the other side of the fence, you're allowed to eat them. They were delicious. And this is the countryside. So this is leaving Matera, heading for um, first stop Albero Bello, which means beautiful tree. And we see in this area, these, these buildings called Truly, which are made with stones. The, uh, the roof, the walls are made with stone and the roofs are made with stone. And they're uh, now a heritage building, but they've been in existence um, off and on since uh, the 1400s. Of course, these aren't from that era, 
but they are, but people continue to build them because they're considered heritage buildings. And we actually stayed in one of these uh, in this town. They were built, there's all sorts of folklore about them that they were easy to take down. When the tax man came, you could pretend like you didn't have a house or uh, because it was largely a rural area in the forest, they didn't want to build permanent houses. Um, it's not really clear which of these is true, but anyway, there they are today. Um, these are some pomegranates, not quite right. And here, here I am having a, a deep conversation about olive oil with this man in the delicatessen. <laughs> Very pretty town. And there's literally thousands of these buildings in this town. You can see there's like a modern door there on that building. So we headed back out from Alberto Bello and you go through lots of olive um, groves. And we stopped in this town called Loco Rotondo, which is just a pretty little town, and then ended up in Ostuni. You can see why they call it the white town. And uh, this was one where we stayed for that night. All kinds of interesting art in Italy. More big and old olive trees. And these are the kind of roads that we were on. In fact, some even smaller than that, which had no names on them. These are, these are uh, uh, olives, not yet ripe. This is another town we stopped in, Cevia Mesapica, um, which was known for a particular type of pastry. And here I am emerging with the with the uh, the uh, the gold at the end of the rainbow. These biscotto, which were delicious. There's a little uh, delivery truck in the town, and this was just in an in an old palace. Finding our way out of the town, sometimes it was walking through little road, little uh, back alleys like that. Here's some really old olive trees. And then we stopped for lunch in Franca Villa Fontana, where we had some del uh, delicious uh, uh, squid. And this town, which ha had some uh, some Jewish history to it, um, and, uh, with an old uh, Jewish quarter, we decided to stop there and just have a look, but there really wasn't much to see except for the fact that um, this guy, this man, was a pharmacist and um, had some notoriety in that time. Then our next stop was Manduria, which is where we stayed. It was the next night for staying, for uh, accommodation. Just, look, just looking up inside that church. We arrived there later in the day, so most of the shots are low, are, uh, low light pictures like these. Typical to see Italian men just gathering. So driving from Manduria, we went down to the coast and we were, we were along this nature reserve, which had a lovely beach and almost no people on it. And we just stopped and went for a swim. It was really lovely. We just uh, locked our bikes to a fence and then went for a swim. Now this is one of many towers. There are about over a hundred towers that were built in the medieval period around Puglia as a defense. I think believe, built by the Normans. One of my favorite flowers, Bougainvillea. And most of this ride was along the coast, heading towards Gallipoli. We had another swim that day right here. Um, this was just right beside the, the bike route and so we just Again, locked the bikes to a fence and, um, and went swimming there. And this is Gallipoli, which is a town that is sort of partly on an island and partly on the mainland, but of course right on the ocean. A uh, pretty little town. We were tired from the bike ride, had a nice uh, cold drink right here. And then checked into our, to our uh, hotel. By the way, our, our suitcases were carried by, a, for by, the, by the tour company, so all we had to do was carry what we needed during the day. Camera and not much else. Here's some more grapes. So leaving Gallipoli, we encountered uh, these folks on this uh, horse-drawn cart. 
There's my wife on the e-bike. And once again, another uh, famous uh, pastizzeria, a bakery, and I got the, the whatever they were offering there, and that, we had a lovely lunch in Galatina. And coming up, I think, is a picture that I showed actually once before to Photo Club. Those of you who are in Photo Club, this was looking down a well that was had some significance with Saint, where St. Saint Paul visited. Then we ended up in Lecce. This is where we stayed the night. And Lecce has some old Roman ruins like this arena, as well as lots of beautiful Baroque architecture like this. There's a park here. So we would just uh, put our, park our bikes at the hotel, have a shower, go for a walk in these towns. That's the way it worked every, every time we stopped, I mean, for the night. And another great little delicatessen. I'm having dinner that night in Lecce. Some kind of a seafood tower. And pasta. So we are leaving Lecce now. Um, and uh, on our way, we stopped in a town called Achaia with this fortress. Very, there was like no other tourists there. This is heading towards Otranto, our last stop. There's a butterfly. And uh, back to the coast, this time on the Adriatic side. You see the water is a similar color, but it, it, it does look a little different there. And the coastline again, more, uh, more of these limestone cliffs. Um, this was a grotto where people went swimming. We didn't actually swim at this place, but there's a video of somebody diving in. Um, and of course, uh, beautiful food. Never stops. I think this is the photo that I used to advertise this talk. You can see you can swim out to those islands. So this was our last day of, of uh, cycling. And now we're in Otranto, which was where we left the bikes. And uh, we had a, a nice afternoon and evening there and um, just visited, uh, this was uh, in one of the cathedrals there. And we were staying, most of the time, staying in the old town, almost in, in every, every town we were staying in the old town. And actually we could go swimming right there in that bay. We did go swimming there the next morning. That's dinner, our last night there. Fishing village as well. This is a church with all these skulls of people that had been massacred, uh, I believe, by the Ottomans. And this is where we went swimming, right here in this, there's this little natural, a little breakwater, and you could swim right there. And then we took uh, the bus to Brindisi. There's uh, some military boat, uh, because we had to fly from Brindisi to, to uh, Malta. So we had, a, we had a day in Brindisi, part of the day. Brindisi is a port. It used to be very rough. Um, I visited there in 1973 in my first trip to Europe, but it was certainly very benign this time. And I got into a conversation with my terrible Italian with this man while my wife was shopping for clothes. An old Roman column. And uh, looking at some beautiful food, this time in the airport. So we landed in Malta and we were in Vittoriosa, which is really right next to Valletta. This is where the siege of Malta occurred. And we were staying essentially in the shadow of the building that the Knights of, of Jerusalem occupied to defend against the Ottomans in 1565. So there's a lot of history here. And this is the port. 
these are the very small boats. And I think I have some shots of some of the, uh, the bigger boats. This is a typical Maltese architecture, those uh, kinds of windows. And this is the way of getting around uh, from the port. There's some of the bigger boats. Uh, over to Valletta. Valletta is across the harbor and you have to take a boat to get there. I mean, it would take a long time to drive there, but it's a very short little boat ride. So this is in the, um, uh, the building that, that was the, the, the um, Knights of Jerusalem occupied in the 1500s. Again, uh, whether it's Malta or Italy, men are always, men are always around watching uh, soccer games. And this is the fort, Fort St. Angelo, which was uh, again, the fort that, they, that um, the Knights of Jerusalem occupied. This is an elevator you have to take to get up to the town in Valletta from the port. When you take a little boat across, you take that elevator up. And then we took a bus to Mar Marsaxlock, which is a town on the south coast, um, pretty little fishing village. And um, then took a boat over to a place called um, St. Peter's um, uh, Pool. You'll see that in just a moment. These are just some rock formations. So there we are. St. Peter's Pool is a natural formation where you can go swimming. And we did. Um, you can see all kinds of people gathered. They dive in. It's, it's quite safe. So here's a man and his dog. And I'll just let you watch this. <laughs> the dog will go anywhere and then my wife wanted to film the same thing of me so there's me <laughs> where's the dog <laughs> no dog <laughs> and if that was a lovely spot to visit quite a few people but yeah and yeah you can either hike there which was a fairly long hike and hot or you could take a boat which we did i mean we took a boat to a uh, to a place where we had to walk a little bit. Just a big tanker that was around the corner near Marsaxla. And um, one of our favorite Italian foods, arancini, but we happen to have it there in Malta. So this is the town of, this is the, the town of Valletta, which is really a, a fairly large town. And um, of course, Malta was, uh, was a British uh, pr uh, property for a long time. So there's a lot of British rel relics there. This is Camino, which is in one of the other islands, and Gozo, yet another island we visited those on one day you take a bus and then ferry small ferries they're, they're very close uh in the north part of the of the country much quieter than valletta these are some old carvings in a prison some print that prisoners have carved this is in gozo i think that was a shoe store and then on the way back um, at Camino, there's this place called Blue Lagoon where we went swimming. And then uh, I walked around the island a little bit, took a few photos. This is on our way back to the main island of Malta. From Gozo, um, back from the Go Gozo and Camino. It's not just a, um, a utilitarian shuttle. They actually took us in these little caves as well on the way back to the, to the uh, mainland. So this is back to Valletta at night. And uh, looking uh, towards Valletta from the port. This is just a little video that my wife took uh, from one of these little shuttle boats. So that's, uh, that's the port. That's where we were staying. And this is what it takes you to the other place. This was actually in World War II. I mentioned that was the defense against the Nazis. That was a war planning room in a bunker way down, way down under, underground. And in commemoration, they do fire these guns uh, from Valletta on a daily basis. Valletta is quite a steep town, steep hilly town, um, but lovely to walk around. Yes, sir. 
and this is just a, a painting of uh, the original siege of Malta with the, with the Ottomans. And this is in a museum showing some of the old uh, armor. That again is, the, is Fort Angelo, which was where the, where the Knights of Jerusalem defended. I think I may have shown this picture at Photo Club once of some, of some bread from a bakery that was, <laughs> we just happened to walk past. I have to tell you that these two books were very inspiring, the two books of the sieges of Malta. So that's why I kept taking pictures of Fort Angelo. And this is our last night. Um, before we visited, our, the last day was in Medina, which is a town in the middle of Malta. Um, mostly a walking town, very pretty to walk around. You can see why there's no vehicles there. And there was a, um, a little market going on, mostly of crafts like this, like sewing type crafts. This is an Albrecht Durer print. It was in the museum there. Well, these are all in Medina. The view of the island. And Rabat is just right next to Medina, another another walking town. And and this was taken in a uh, catacomb underground, which was used during World War II as a place for people to hide out during the bombing, the Nazi bombing, as well as catacomb or much earlier as well. And that is Valletta. The man Valletta was the was the chief of the Knights of Jerusalem, and uh, he's the one that that town was named after. And here we are back home on Spanish banks. And that's it. Okay, well, Peter, thank you so much. Perhaps you could unshare your screen, which maybe you have done. I'm going to go back to gallery view, yes. Yeah, I stopped sharing. Before I open it up for people to ask questions, I have a question of my own, and that is how long did you actually spend in Puglia, and how long did you spend in Malta? How long was this overall, this trip? Okay, so it was about, um, but we had six, six nights in, on the bike trip, six, and then three uh, in Bari on the, uh, at the, well, three in Bari at, at the front end, six nights on the bike trip, and then one extra night uh, in um, Brindisi at the end. So uh, that's 10 nights, and then there was a day of travel to, to and then we had five nights, we stayed for five nights in Malta. We stayed in the same place in Malta. Okay, so just over two weeks. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, I can't see everybody on the screen, so you might just have to chip in and you come up probably. And uh, and you, we can un unmute yourself if you want to talk, please, because everybody's muted right now. I was just curious. Um, I ride my bike around Richmond, which I enjoy because there are no hills. But I imagine there were quite a few hill ascents and descents in Italy. How extensive was that? So yeah, um, um, I had a like a hybrid bike, and my wife had an e-bike. She partly I don't know if you noticed she had she had actually injured her ankle, and that's why she was wearing a little uh, kind of a boot um, on the trip. Um, uh, at the time, um, there were there, I mean. I was able to manage the hills. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, the world's best athlete, but I would suggest, I think this is a trip that's probably uh, better done uh, by e-bike uh, because it can be very hot. And then some, there were some hills like leaving Manduri. I remember there was one hill that was just, it just got steeper and steeper towards the top. It was pretty hard at the, at the top for me. Um, but I, I think by e-bike, they're all manageable. And I saw a, a lot of people, people older than me, 
who were uh, riding e-bikes on a trip like this. So I think it, that that's what I would recommend. And the, the agencies that rent these, that organize these things, uh, do rent e-bikes. That's just all to know. Thanks. But I think it's a, it, you know, the, the, the route that you take is away from all the roads. So it's just fabulous. It's mm -hmm. all back country. And sometimes I didn't even, I couldn't believe that I was supposed to be going down this little narrow path, but that was the right place to be because it was the arrow on my GPS said, this is where to go. Yeah, so uh, uh, Carolyn, I guess that's Yeah, I'm... yeah, thank you. No, I'm, so you, you were on a bike, but how, how doable would this trip be if you didn't have a bike? So I guess there's probably not a lot of public transportation. You'd have to drive it, right? Yeah, now it's a whole different trip uh, on in a car. We saw people doing, you know, seeing some of the same towns by car and talk to people. So it is doable. It's just that getting from town to town are their different routes. You're going to be on roads, um, mm -hmm. sometimes highways. Uh, not, I, I don't think there's much in the way of the super highway type, you know, the autostrada down there, but, um, but you'll be yes. on highways. It'll be different. However, you can get to all of those towns by road. And, and what about? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I was just wondering what, what your sense was of um, the availability and the quality of accommodation if you do something like that. It was excellent. Um, the, I mean, we, as I say, we work with, uh, we dealt with a company called Puglia Cycle Tours. Um, and they, you know, they're very flexible. They could probably, if you wanted to call them and say, look, I just want the accommodation. Can you do that for <laughs> me? I bet they could do it. No, I'm serious. Yeah. I think they could. Um, these were all, um, I guess, what, what, what they would be in terms of stars, four, three to four star, three to four star hotels. They were all very clean, private bath, um, very nice breakfast, uh, very nice hosts, uh, you know, at the, at the front desk. Um, they stored our bikes safely. I mean, you know, I, I would stay there again easily, mm -hmm. any of them. Somebody else had a question. I just wanted to add, um, you can drive this quite easily and stay off the highways. And it's um, it, as long as you avoid uh, highways and toll roads, you're on small roads and it's quite safe. Uh, the congestion is when you go through the small towns. Yeah, and in fact, it's sometimes it's better to park outside the, oh, the yeah. walls of the small <laughs> towns and just walk in um, mm -hmm. because it's very difficult. I, I would think it's very difficult to navigate. I gather, are you from that area or you certainly um, have been yes, there? Yes, I, I was born there and I actually traveled there about the same time you did and oh. through many of the same areas. And uh, we did it by car and uh, yeah, no, very drivable and very very comfortable to drive and I agree with you. The hotels, uh, they're all very clean and uh, we didn't have any problems at all. I'm actually surprised did you stay at, at any Masseria? I'm sorry, say that again? Masseria is um, their old uh, land holdings very large land holdings yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're a nice place to stay. They're interesting as well. Right. We did that south of Lecce and that can be very interesting as well. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those tend to be right in like in the rural areas near, near farmland. Is that correct? Yes, they're surrounded by farmland. Right. So, so uh, this trip was purposely um, designed so that we would visit and stay in these, in these towns you know, during our evenings rather than in the middle of a, of a rural area. Mm -hmm. But I did see them. And I think, I think Daniel Craig was staying at one of those because I saw the truck, the, the, the <laughs> limousines coming into town, into Matera from one of those places. I noticed you took quite a photos of the uh, cactus pears. Did you taste them? I did not. I did not. Those were the very <laughs> colorful things yeah. on the uh, cactus. Yeah. Yeah, no, they should try them sometimes. They're interesting. Okay. I think Richard was next. Yeah, Peter, thanks. I really enjoyed your talk, and I, I loved the uh, the way you put your slideshow together. It was, uh, it was very nice to watch. But I wanted to ask a couple of questions. The first was, when you, when you cycled up to your accommodation with your e-bike, 
did the host take care of charging the battery for you or did you have to take it off and take it up to your room and plug it into the shaver outlet? Yeah, this um, particular bike, you basically just take the battery right off the okay. frame. It's very easy, and we right. and, and we just we had the charger with us. Uh, we never needed to charge during the day. Uh, um, we always had enough charge for the entire du um, duration of the of the ride during the day. So um, my my wife just brought it up. We just plugged it in when we got to the hotel. Okay, thank you. And my second question had to do with the the little cottages with the stone roofs. Were those roofs? Or do you know if the roofs were kind of self-supporting, like an arch, or were they were they a covering, like a tile would be, over some structure that was underneath? My understanding is it's like an arch. Okay, um, self-supporting. They are, they are self-supporting, and the idea was that they could disassemble them very quickly um, if need be. Um, this is what uh, some of the folklore about these. I've been reading about them trying to find a little bit more about the truly to, to, to explain it. I knew people would ask about those today, but um, uh, I do know that they're self-supporting. And But uh, for example, the one that we stayed in, I think they put like a liner on the inside. So right. we didn't see all the, all the backside of the stones. And I guess it's insulated a little bit as well. Yeah, I mean, it looks as if they're free of mortar. And so uh, you're safely home, but you know, I would be concerned if there was an earthquake, to be honest. Uh, you, you might find a pile of rock on your head. But yeah, I guess so. It's so, possible. So, um, I mean, maybe there aren't, you know, earthquakes must not be frequent or those, you know, if my hypothesis is correct, that they would not survive a serious earthquake. They wouldn't be all over the place. So obviously they're, they're well suited to the terrain. And the people are still building them because they are considered heritage buildings. And so they, you know, they can, I guess they get mm -hmm. different dispensations because they're building that style. Yeah. I said that your, your luggage was uh, transported for you and accommodations were arranged. And I just wondered how much flexibility you had each day, because clearly some people would spend longer in one place than another and take photographs or have something to eat and so on. Um, how much flexibility did you have for, for arriving each time? Well, the idea was that, um, you know, we had to, if we were starting at point A, uh, we knew that we had to end the day at point B. That's all. We could do whatever we wanted in between. And, and the, the, the tour company took our bag from point A to point B. It would arrive in, at, the, at point B, I think generally by about um, three o'clock in the afternoon. We usually arrived after that um, because we stopped and did things and visited various towns. And there were other things that we did that I didn't, I didn't show photos of, like we visited a cheese factory in one town and stopped and they had a picnic and things. So it was, it's essentially, the, the bags were there at the destination by about 3 p.m. each day. Does that answer your question uh, in terms yeah, of- It does, so it seems uh, very flexible. You could pretty well take your time and uh, when you arrived, uh, the bags would be there and you arrived when you arrived. And uh, that sounds very flexible indeed. Yeah. Yeah, they were always there. Uh, there was never any, 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 mess, any mess ups with that. Well, if I could just pop in another, sorry. If I could just pop in another question, Peter. Sure. You mentioned the GPS system and you mentioned flexibility. If you wandered off the preordained route, did it keep updating the arrow and saying recalculating, et cetera? Um, or did you have um, no. to get back onto the arrow? You had to get back onto the arrow. Now, I, okay. you know, I, I had the GPS on my bike. My wife didn't have one on her bike, so she followed me. Um, and I have to tell you, from the word go, and when we left Matera, I got on the wrong road. There were these two roads that were almost parallel, leaving Matera. And I couldn't quite tell, should I take the one on the left or the one on the right? Anyway, I took the wrong one. Then I could see, eventually, this divergence between the arrow and where I, and, and where I was going. Um, and so that's how I got back. But as long as you kind of remembered you know, where you, like, it's not like we just stayed on that route the whole time. Of course, we parked the bikes, we walked around towns. Um, yeah. As long as we knew where the route was, we could, we could get back on it. Thank you. Does that, does that make sense? You know, so we could yeah, wander. Yeah. Sure. Maybe I could just give you an alternative to that, uh, Peter. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, my wife, Eileen, and I uh, are particularly interested because we are off to Puglia on Sunday. Fabulous. With, uh, another group. Um, they're called Saddle Skidaddle, which is an English group, and uh, 
there have been a few questions asked about uh, route finding, etc. for you. This particular group uh, will offer a self-guided tour like yours or a guided tour. And we are in fact on a guided tour which starts in Lecce and then goes around the south part of the uh, of the peninsula and then goes back up towards uh, Belize. But uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that uh, perhaps the biggest difference between a self-guided tour and a guided tour is that in the guided tour, we're not allowed to wear the very uh, sleek, smart uh, Italian helmets that you were wearing. Um, well, we weren't wearing sleek helmets. You, we were no helmets. We were just wearing baseball helmets. But um, let me just say the Puglia Cycle Tours also does guided tours, and we actually ran into some of those people along the way. Um, you mean you mean you're not allowed to uh, to uh, wear fancy clothes? Is that what you mean? Well, <laughs> or something? Have, like that? And I was trying to just be uh, humorous, but maybe okay. Uh, yeah. About yeah. the uh, being a cyclist myself, I, I I don't even go to the store without my helmet on, um, and I noticed yeah. just uh, you had a, a special type of helmet. I'm yeah, sure. no, we didn't have any help. We you know we 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 thought about that. I think we. Uh, we might have actually brought them with us. Uh, I, I am very diligent about wearing a helmet here when I cycle, believe me. But um, because of the nature of where we were, where we were going, um, it was very low risk. It was almost no traffic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't like I was speeding downhill anywhere. So, mm -hmm. but so thanks okay. for the comment. Were you yeah. part of a group tour, even though you could do your own stuff? No. We we booked this as individuals with uh, with this company, and they we you know we kind of uh, negotiated back and forth. Them, I mean, uh, we discussed with them about you know how many days and um, and the routing and the towns that we wanted to see, um, and so uh, that's how it worked. It was it was sort of customized for us. Although they this is not an uncommon routing. Um, uh, people do this kind of route, um, but we we weren't part of a group. I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages both ways. I mean, we, we enjoyed our, we, we, my wife and I generally uh, don't travel in groups just because we like to kind of explore spontaneously. So that, that's why we did that. And if you are not a regular cyclist in Vancouver, for example, not cycling all the time, would you recommend such a cycle tour if using an e-bike even? Or, yeah, I think. Or is your well, to get too sore? I think I would rec I would recommend it as an e-bike. To my wife needed, you know, she had this ankle issue, and she rode the e-bike, and she was fine. And and the e-bike um, was one of these ones that actually I think had a little bit of, had a throttle on it. You know, some of them we have e-bikes here now too. Uh, the bikes we have don't have throttles, but the bike you can buy bikes that have a throttle. In other words, you don't have to pedal at all, and you get some some uh, sit, you get uh, some uh, power. So um, uh, and the other thing is. Um, as was mentioned um, by um, Apollonia, is that how you pronounce your name? Yes. Um, yeah. Um, that you know there are various routes, and so you don't necessarily. You, I'm sure that it could be customized to to minimize the hills. We didn't have a lot of hills, but there were some hills. Yeah, most of the routes you were on, Peter. It seemed to me that they were the access routes for the agricultural people. Because exactly. the land holdings are not huge land holdings. They have smaller plots and they need to move from one to the other. Somebody was mentioning about mortar before. They don't use mortar in between the stones. Uh, and also as you were traveling through there, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there are drywalls dividing the properties. And those drywalls are also without mortar but there's a, a specific technique for building them. Yeah. So they don't come tumbling down. Right, and we say drywall, we mean a dry stack, dry stack of, yeah. of yeah. rocks. Yeah, right, yeah. No, you're right, we were on uh, tra mostly, tra I, I would say tractor roofs. Yes, <laughs> and, exactly, that's what they are. Yeah, mostly for farm implements, and we didn't see too many of them, and they, you know, they weren't like, there wasn't any hazards, so. How's our time? I think we're getting close, but any other questions or comments? Uh, was this, could you hear it and, and could you see the transitions and everything of the images? Okay, I, I just not, this is the first time I've done this on Zoom, so I just wasn't sure how it came across. And your Pitsika music was wonderful. Your first well, song. Well, thank you for, for, of course you would know that. That's, I, 
when I make these these presentations, I like to have music from the region in which we work. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why I found that pizzica. Very music. typical of that area. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think Peter it came across quite well. Um, I think for some of some of the elements, uh, it was a little bit slower than you probably would see on your computer, but it actually worked very well. The music uh, was just fine. It was great. So okay. I think you can give some more of these presentations in the future. I will call on you again. <laughs> well, I have a few others from other trips, but of course I like to see other people's presentations yeah. in the meantime. So, and if anybody's interested, I mean, this was done. Uh, I'm not, I'm no whiz. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not Roy Saunders in terms of expertise and all this stuff. Um, but I did this just on a, on a Mac uh, using, you know, this, the software on the Mac of making a pro, a, well, a, an album and then a, and then a project and then un, uh, putting music underneath it and then right typing in the labels. So it was pretty, pretty simple. It was really enjoyable. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Appreciate your comment. So before we uh, finish the meeting, um, I want to give you notice of the next two meetings. Uh, on May the 11th, I'm going to speak to you again. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get anyone from the group who would volunteer to give a talk in May. So I will do it myself. I have to do it a little early because on May the 14th, I'm actually leaving to go to France for two weeks. So on May 11th, I will talk to you about a trip to the Loire Valley in France, which followed on the river uh, ship cruise that I talked to you about a couple of months ago. Uh, but this is by road, um, not by bike, but by vehicle uh, to various towns in the Loire Valley. So that's what I will do in May, and it's May the 11th, a little earlier in May than you would usually have it. And then on June the 15th, Barbara Bernhardt, who has not talked to us before, I'm pleased to say that she is going to be talking to us about Slovenia. Uh, and I... I'm quite interested to hear about that part of the world. I've not, we've not had anything to do with that in, uh, in recent times anyhow. So as I said uh, to the people who were here before we started, uh, we're all set for uh, until the summer. Then in October, we have uh, someone who's willing to talk. But I'm looking for speakers for September and for November. Uh, the expectation is that in December we will not have a, a, a talk and we will start again after the Christmas vacation in January. So please, would somebody uh, volunteer to give some kind of travel talk in September? And again, I need somebody for November. I'd love to have new, new people speak. Um, and I, uh, some people have expressed a concern as to the quality of uh, the photograph and things of that nature. Don't worry about it. I think what we're most interested in is your personal experience of traveling to certain areas, of how you did it, what you did, what you liked, any guidance you can give for us who might be interested in going to the same kind of area. So even if the photographs are not uh, the quality that Peter showed today, don't worry about it. Just uh, come and tell us about your travel experience. I'm sure we all do things differently when we travel, uh, but it'd be of interest. So are there any other comments or questions before we uh, conclude this meeting? Then again, Peter, I'd like to thank you for volunteering and for giving a wonderful, memorable type of presentation. So thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.